Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I want to uh, share with you today, kind of jump back in a little bit, what I was talking about uh, actually two weeks ago. So the odds are some of you probably weren't here two weeks ago, but that's okay. This will help you anyway. Um, Because the Lord really uh, has been dealing with me so strongly about something that he spoke to me about this year. And I just can't get off of it for you and I mean for myself as well. And um, uh, the Lord spoke really two things uh, in, uh, over the New Year's Eve. Uh, one of them was that you've got to get your faith strong in your weak areas. You've got to get your faith strong in your weak areas. How many of you know your weaknesses? You know, yeah, sure. You know, you know more than anybody. Well, my wife may know more than me about my weaknesses, but um, uh, I'm not talking about waving the Southern-made donut in front of you. If you can, if you can resist that, come pray for me. <laughs> I don't like Southern-made. Well, <clears throat> I'll pray over you, and you'll be all right. <laughs> but, but I really feel like we're about to enter into a season where you better be ready. Say, well, I thought I think the COVID's about over with. Listen, uh, this is not about COVID. This is about a transition into a new, a whole new world system that we're moving into things that are, uh, and things that you're hoping for may not come to pass, naturally speaking. The dynamics of life may change uh, all over the world. And you're going to have to be ready for it. Um, that's why the other thing that the Lord spoke to me was this, that you're going to have to start taking seriously your belief system and how it interacts with your lifestyle because it's going to be critical in the days to come. See, you can tell me you believe anything, but how is it interacting with your lifestyle? How is it affecting your life? How is it affecting the way you live your life? Because it's, it's easy to say, you know, well, you know, I believe this, or I believe that. And I told this story, I think, you know, last time a, a friend of mine from high school, I was talking to him about the Lord, you know, uh, so, ran into him, you know, a um, number of years later. And I was talking to him about the Lord. And he said, well, Sam, I believe there's a God. And I looked at him and said, so does the devil. That doesn't mean anything. Just believing there's a God. How is that interacting with your lifestyle? How are you? How are you living your life based on what you believe and based on your faith? And I, I know this. I know this in my spirit. It's just so strong that I get concerned about it. And I wish I could pray it off of you, but you better hear that Christians are going to start questioning their faith over circumstances that challenge their life. Well, why me? Well, why now? Well, what about this? I don't understand. Well, listen, we. We have to understand what we know and what we believe by faith, not by what the circumstances are telling us. And you, you've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life. Because if you're going to live your life based on the circumstances, you're in serious trouble in the future. But if, you've got, if, you, have, if you live a life of faith and your lifestyle uh, is focused on your faith, then when challenges come, you can, you can accept the challenge. You can de- deal with it, and the Bible says that we can overcome. Thank you for that enthusiasm, one, one amen there. Uh, maybe y'all don't know the word amen. I, I don't want to. Okay. So uh, here's the problem that I see coming, and that is that you, you, people are going to try to adjust their beliefs to coincide with their circumstances. The only way you can do that and be a Christian is to blame God for it and have some kind of doctrine that teaches that, well, you know, that's God's purpose. That's God's plan. You know, you you better know what the Word of God says. You better know what the Bible says. 
not what, not what something is saying to adjust to your circumstances. Because, listen, it doesn't matter whether I, I know this sounds crazy, whether I succeed or fail in my faith. My faith is not perfect, neither is yours, and it never will be as long as we're on this earth. But the thing you've got to understand is this, that it's the best option in the world. The world has no answers. Our faith has more answers. And so we've got to keep our faith focused and keep ourselves focused on who we are, what we believe, and what the Word of God says about us. Because the moment you start questioning why, you put yourself in no man's land. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's a dangerous place to be. You can't, because, listen to me, most of the time, if you're asking the question why, you don't know the answer, and there probably isn't an answer, that, you know, that you could come up with that would be satisfactory to you. So you've got to be careful about that and about the way uh, you live your life. Because the, uh, it, it says um, in James chapter 1, verse 8, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's exactly where the devil wants you to be. He wants you to be double-minded. Uh, another word, the word we use today more than that word, is the word ambiguous. And it means that you're open to more than one interpretation. Something might have a double meaning. Well, you know, I found out that the Word of God doesn't have double meanings. It might have, it might have a, 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 a direction that you can take a, a word from the Lord that would be personal to you, but it's not double. And, and the worst thing you can do is if you get in trouble is to go look, go read Job. Because you don't understand Job. Don't ask me to tell you how to understand Job. But I understand redemption. I understand what Jesus did. And what Job did and what happened to Job has nothing to do with my redemption. So there's a big difference. Yeah, and I'm already way off of what I was going to preach, but, but anyway. So here's the thing. Listen, your lifestyle has got to flow with the gospel message. You've got to live a gospel life, a good news life. That's what the word gospel means. It means good news. God didn't send a bad news gospel. Hey, I'm going to send Jesus. He's going to die for you, but I'll kill you if you mess up. If God spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all, how much more will he freely give us all things? That's what the Word of God says. That's what I choose to believe. Do I have all things? Well, not yet. But that's, what I, that's my belief. That's, where I'm af- that's what I'm after. And to be honest with you, Eventually, I'm going to get it because I'm going to go to heaven. This life is temporary anyway. I mean, we live here because God's placed us here at this time, at this moment, to be responsible for the good news of the gospel. But but you've got to understand something. You've got to keep your faith strong in weak areas. You've got to let your faith and your lifestyle merge together as one. And live that way and let God work in your life. Because if you don't, when times get more troubled, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more difficult for you to try to catch up. So here's the thing that I want to just jump in with today. And it's a real simple message. And I really felt like the Lord wanted me to kind of go this direction. And that's this. You need to know your faith in God can change your world. You don't like where you are right now? You don't like the circumstances of your life right now? Go find out what God's Word says. Go find out what God's Word says about you. He will give you and show you a word from His Word that, that will literally define where you can be rather than where you are. Doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges in life. We all have challenges in life. I've had lots of challenges in my life. 
And I'm not obviously not bragging or saying I'm perfect at all, but I, I, I just made up my mind. I'm going to just believe what God's word says. Yeah, but what about this? What about this? Yeah, but what about God? Because God's the one that can change circumstances. God's the one through faith that can work in your life and change circumstances in your, in your life. And, and so I'm not saying you can change the world, but you can change your world. Because we're in a fight of faith to keep our Christian lifestyle. I don't know whether you know it or not. But listen, the, the enemy, the world system, everything is against you to force you out of believing God, standing on what God says, living a God life, and being like everybody else. Well, I don't like to hear stuff like that. Well, you better listen now. You better, you better listen now. Listen to this. The more active our faith is in every area of our lives, the stronger we will be to live life the way God intended us to live it. That's what I want. I want to live life the way God intended for me to live it. And I know, I know as long as we're on this earth, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. And as long as we've got this dirt that we, that we wear... I didn't say you were dirty, I, but we're made out of what? Dirt. As long as we're carrying this body until it is redeemed, the Bible says, we have to fight everything off by faith. We have to keep our faith alive and active. So you've got to understand that, that that's how we have to live our life because the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six. 6, listen, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, I'm a good person. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you, you, you need to know that. Because the Bible says very clearly here that, that uh, those who come to God must believe that He is and, now listen to this, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, the more active your faith is toward God, the more God is active toward you. That's the way, that's the way it works. That's the way God works. Now listen, there's all kinds of religious doctrine out there that will contradict what I said, but you can't contradict what the Word of God says. You can change it. You can try to make it sound like something it's not. But the Bible's pretty clear here. Without what? Faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, God loves me. I know God loves you, but you're not pleasing to him if you're not operating by faith. If faith is not part of your life. Faith is not a, an act that you made when you were 12 years old and got baptized and and now everything's okay and you're going to live like you want. Faith is a living, active, breathing part of your life and your relationship with the Father. And that's where we live. That's how we live. That's how we live our lives. That's where, how we work in our lives. So there are two things I want, I want to tell you real quick, and then I'm going to get, show you this something from the Word. But listen, two things you need to know, okay? Number one, God is no respecter of persons. I want to tell you something. Listen, if you will understand that, you can go find anybody you, can, you want to. Let me give you a good, let me give you a, this is kind of a carnal example, but in a way, but, but years and years ago, I was preaching in, in a church out in California and the pastor of the church was struggling. He needed $350,000. This was Sunday night. He needed $350,000 Monday morning or he was going to lose his building. That's pretty dire. He was up against the wall. He had no other options. And, and so I was preaching and, and, and I was ministering to people. He was, he was ministering to people and the Spirit of God was touching people's lives. And I had basically I, had, I was finished praying for the people that I was praying for. And I sat down. And I sat down and a guy came up and, 
And uh, the pastor prayed for him, and he turned around to walk back, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, tell him he's got to obey God now and do exactly what the Lord told him to do. Now, this, now listen, this was in the 80s, okay? This guy was not dressed in a fine suit, you know, alligator shoes and big expensive watch and all this paraphernalia. He was in a, he was in a jogging suit and not a new one. So it had nothing to do with the man's appearance. But I, I stopped him on the way back. I said, now, listen, I'm just going to tell you. I know you don't know me, and, 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 but I believe you'll know what this means. The Lord spoke to him and said, he's already spoken to you. You've got to do what he told you to do, and you're going to have to obey him. That's all I said. He threw up his hands. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> well, what? I'm going to pay this building off. I sat in that pastor's office the next day when he came in and he wrote that check for $350,000. I held it in my hand. And you know what I said? Listen, Father, you are no respecter of persons. If you'll do something like this for him, you'll do something like this for me. Now, I'm going to tell you, that prayer that day has multiplied in my life over the years. I have had numerous. I had a man sitting at, with, talking to me one day at lunch and wrote a check to the church for a half a million dollars. Why? Because I got great faith? No, God's no respecter of persons. But now let me just tell you this. He does respect faith. When I grabbed hold of that check and I said, you're not a respected person, I was declaring what I believe. I was declaring my faith. So here's my point. God's no respecter of persons. So if you, if you see something and it quickens in your spirit, that's my same situation. And look what God did. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll do the same thing for you if you just grab hold of it by faith. It's not, well, God, you did it for them, and I, I deserve the same thing they do. That's not the way God works. He's looking for your faith to be active, to be operational. So first thing is God is no respecter of persons. All right, you, you got it? All right, listen. The second thing is, listen to this. It's real simple. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I want to tell you, that will revolutionize your life if you will read the Bible, read the New Testament, and say he's the same. What he did, he'll do today. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll do today what he did then. It wasn't... Listen, and I'm going to show you this from the Word. It wasn't because he was trying to prove his deity. Okay? He certainly did, but, but, but listen. Most of the people that Jesus ministered to, it wasn't even him. Over in Mark chapter, Mark chapter 5, the, the Bible talks about a woman who had an issue of blood. Spent everything she had trying to get well. And the Bible says she didn't get better. She got worse. But then it says, when she heard about Jesus. Now, I'm going to put this out of, out of scriptural order, but this is the way it happened. Okay. She said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And then the Bible says she pressed in to that crowd that was around Jesus at the time, reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And when he did, the power of God flowed out of him into her, and she was totally healed. Now, Jesus didn't even know. I know this. You say, well, Jesus knew everything. No, he didn't. Jesus lived as a man by the Holy Spirit, but as a man. He stopped and said, who touched me? Wait, wait a minute. So, so, somebody touched me. Well, 
Well, Jesus, everybody's touching you. And he didn't say this in the word, but I can imagine Jesus saying, no, somebody, they touched me in a different way because I felt the anointing of God. I felt the power of God flow out of me into them. And the woman hearing that and knowing what had happened in her body came, came, fell down before Jesus and told him everything that had happened. Told him everything that had happened. Now, Jesus, listen to me carefully. Jesus wasn't playing games with this woman. He didn't know she was there and kind of slowed his pace a little bit so she could catch up and kind of move around so she could reach in and between people and get to him. He was going right down the road to Jairus' house. And this woman touched him and power flowed out of him and flowed into her. So well, how do you do that today? You do it by faith in the Word of God because Jesus was and is the Word. Amen. Okay. Now listen to what Jesus said to this, to, the, to this woman. In verse 34, Daughter, you ready? Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Now, see, listen, Jesus works in lots of ways. Jesus, he, he healed people that didn't deserve healing. He healed people. But, but listen to me. That was when Jesus was in a certain place at a certain time. And sometimes we're waiting for that and trying to be in that place when he's everywhere for us if we'll use our faith. The Bible says we are to walk by faith. Now, listen, I'm not telling you you're going to be perfect at this. You're not going to do it perfectly. But you've got to get a revelation of the fact that that's how we're supposed to live our lives. That's where we live. That's our wheelhouse, so to speak, of how we live, live, our, live our lives. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Over in Mark chapter 10, the Bible talks about a, a blind man. His name was Simon Bar-Jonas. He heard Jesus when he was coming by. Heard it was Jesus. You know he'd heard about Jesus. The rumors were everywhere. So he just started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Nothing happened. They told him to be quiet. He just got louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. Now, now you got to hear this. Now listen. Jesus stopped, called the man to him. He threw off his coat, and he went to Jesus, found his way to Jesus, stumbled around finding, listening for his voice and found Jesus. Jesus didn't walk over to him. He called him to him. Now, now listen to this. Jesus saw him doing all this. And he stands there, and you know what Jesus did? He said, what do you want? <laughs> Why was he doing that? He was wanting to activate his faith. Amen. What do you want? Well, Jesus, you know a good doctor that can help me with my eyesight, or can you give me a little money to help me get through the week? Now, I'm not being critical. I'm just telling you. Listen, Jesus said, what do you want? And he said, I want to see. Now, listen to this. Jesus ministered to him. He was healed. Listen to what it says in verse 52. Jesus said to him, go your way. You ready? Your faith, your faith has made you well. That's what we got to grab hold of. Now, that doesn't mean, listen, that doesn't mean you, you, can't, you can't go to the doctor or you don't go to the doctor or you don't. Th th that's not the point at all. The point is, where is your faith? I've been to doctors lots of times, but I went there with my faith and I left with my faith. 
Are y'all still? Okay. I want you to see this so you, you can understand this, all right? There was a woman over in Luke chapter 7. This woman, how would you like to be known as a, as a, a sinner? That's how she was listed, and she came to Jesus, and, and, and the, Bible, the Bible says uh, and, uh, she was a sinner. Oh, yeah, 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 there's Sam. Yeah, he, uh, he, he's a sinner. That, that's, how, that's how she was referred to. It says there was a woman in the city, and uh, she was a sinner. But she knew where Jesus was. <laughs> and so she came to Jesus. Now, the religious people didn't like it. Now, I don't want to get into that. They didn't like it. So Jesus had to teach them something about forgiveness. But, but the point is, this woman came, fell down at his feet, was kissing his feet, which was probably gross for those people because they didn't understand. Jesus understood, okay? So, so here's the interesting thing about this. All right, listen to this. He said to her in verse 48, your sins are forgiven. Then in verse 50, he said to the woman, now listen to this, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Do you know I'm, that's how I got saved? By faith? Do you know that's the only way to get saved? You don't get saved by water baptism. You don't get saved by making a, a commitment to the church, signing up, hey, I'm a member of the church now, or I joined the church. That, that's not salvation. Salvation is when you choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you accept him by faith. Then your sins are forgiven. You're cleansed, okay? So how did it happen? By faith. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith is the only way to access the grace of God. I don't have time to get into that, okay? So are you following what I'm saying? Now, I know some people would say, well, but you know, that was Jesus when he was on the earth and, and, um, uh, and, and, and that was when he was there and it was easy to have faith, really, you might want to go read the New Testament if you think it was easy to have faith because Jesus was not a, a, a popular guy in religious circles. But just so you know that it wasn't that, over in Luke chapter, I mean uh, Acts chapter four, uh, 14, Paul was preaching in Lystra. And there was, it says there was a certain man in Lystra who was crippled in his feet from his mother's room, who never walked. Now notice what it says in verse 9. Now listen to this. Acts chapter 14, verse 9. The man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently. Now notice this. And seeing that he had faith to be healed. The man had faith to be healed. So what did he do? He said, get up. Get up on your feet. The man jumped up before he knew he couldn't. <laughs> and was totally healed. How did he get faith to be healed just listening to Paul? Well, Paul must have been talking about healing because the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Paul must have been talking about healing. Because he had faith to be healed. Didn't say he was a Christian either, by the way. In fact, he, he, he probably wasn't until after that. So you've got you've to grab hold of this for yourself and understand and realize that this is the way we have to live our lives. It's easy, listen to me, it is easy <clears throat> just to be a church person. Come to church, worship God, hear a good message, makes you feel good, and go live like everybody else. But the problem is there are going to be things that come into your life that you're going to face in your life that you're not going to have answers to outside of faith. All right. And you have to develop your faith. Your faith should be growing exceedingly, the Bible says. 
It should grow. You should be a person of faith so when those challenges come into your life that you can deal with it. And I understand people have challenges in their life. Some have big challenges in their life. And I, and I don't know where you are with your faith, but the, the, the thing that you've got to do is keep your faith as strong. Go to the Word of God. Let God work. Let people of faith stand with you. But bottom line, it, it comes down to that. There was a man over in Matthew chapter 8 who was a, a, a Roman so, soldier. He was a commander. And he came to Jesus because his servant was dying in pain. And Jesus said, well, I'll come heal him. And the man said, you don't have to do that. He said, I'm a man under authority. In other words, he was under Caesar. He said, but I also have men under me. And when I say to this one, go, he goes. And when to this one, my servant... Come, he comes. He said, just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Listen, that blew Jesus away. He said, that man's got more faith than all the children of Israel. Why? Because he understood authority. He understood that he was under God, but he had authority. And he called it faith. So if you understand that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for you, he died on the cross for you to pay the price for you, wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace was upon him, by his stripes you were healed, then you understand where faith lives. You understand where it lives. Jesus said this guy's got more faith than anybody in, the whole, in, in Israel. So you've got to understand your faith can bring powerful change in your life if you will understand how it works, how it operates, how to live in that realm of faith. And listen, I can't teach you all of it today. I couldn't teach it to you in, in a year. You can learn it, though. There are plenty of books in the bookstore that will help you with that. Just read your Bible. Take, take notes. Study. Let the Word of God speak to you, which is what I'm about to talk about. So, so you've got to understand that. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 4, verse 16, that Abraham is the father of our faith. So, well, no, Jesus is. No, Jesus was the author of our faith. But Abraham was the father of it. Okay, there's a big difference. I don't, I'm not going to get into that, but there's a difference. But the reason he was the father of our faith is because he's the first one to act in faith that we can copy. We, we can copy his faith. We can copy the way he, he, he operated in, in faith. Well, well, what did Abraham do? Well, at, first of all, Abraham had a word from God, a promise from God. And Abraham, the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 4, in, um, that, that he, I, I don't want to read all this, but that, um, that he believed God. What God did he believe? The one who calls those things which do not exist as though they did. He believed that God. I believe that God. Man, he called, uh, hey, I don't know what God thought about me before I got saved, but it probably wasn't good. You say, well, he loves everybody. Yeah, I know, but he's looking at me going, Sam, Sam, Sam. But you know what? Out of the midst of that came something that didn't even exist before. I became a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. All things became new. God knows you couldn't do it with the old man. He, you've got to be new. He calls those things that be not, those things that do not exist, as though they did. So what did Abraham do? It says, contrary to hope, he just kept hoping. Contrary to hope, he just kept believing. He hoped on in faith, one translation says. He didn't have any hope to go on. All the hope he was hearing was, I'm 100 years old. 
my wife is old. We're, ba- we're past that time of our life. But yet, I'm not going to consider that. I am not going to, I'm not going to choose that. I'm not going to choose to look at that. In fact, it says he considered not his own body. But if you study that in the, in the Greek text, it says he looked at his own body and considered not to consider it. In other words, he looked at that and said, if we're going to go by this, it ain't going to work. So he chose not to, be, to look at his own body. He chose what? To believe God, to believe what God said, to believe God's promise. It says he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was well able to perform. That's where we have to live our lives. God, you promised, and what you promised, you are well able to perform. I am not moved by the circumstances. And listen, this didn't go on for a day or two. This went on for 25 years. Long time. That's that's rounded off 25 years, okay? So what you've got to understand is this. Listen. You've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life. You're going to have to make up your mind which way you're going to live. Am I going to live a lifestyle of, of, of and don't misunderstand me this, because, because there can be times when hope can help you a lot, but hope can only go so far. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. See, you can hope, but you got to attach something to that hope. You, you got to hook up with it. You've got to hook up. And that's why it says that Abraham, he just kept hoping. He hoped on in faith according to what was spoken. He didn't waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and then being fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. I I like what one translation says uh, uh, about this. It says in verse 19, not being weak in faith. The the one translation says that his faith made him strong. In fact, if you study it out, that's more, because if you're not careful, you say, well, I'm just weak in faith. Well, get strong. In fact, in the Greek text, it says his faith made him strong. He wasn't strong physically. He wasn't even strong mentally. Because I can tell you, sometimes mentally you won't be where you are in your spirit, where that spirit of faith works. But, but he, was not, he was strong, in, and his, his faith made him strong to continue and to believe God and to see God work. So make up your mind. Listen, make up your mind. This is how I want to live my life. Because the, uh, the alternatives are going to get slimmer and slimmer and push you further and further away from God. Because you'll, listen to me. Don't get mad at me. You'll start justifying your circumstances. You might as well be honest about it. Yep, yeah, I know I'm not living like, I'm not living right. I'm not living like I should. Or, well, I didn't even think about using my faith in that situation. Well, maybe today will stir you up to, Turn that around. Look at things a different way. Yeah, but I've had so many failures. Well, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Just get up. Get knocked down, get up. Well, I don't know which way to go. Well, that's fine, but you're not without hope. You're not without a source. God can give you revelation. God can give you wisdom. But you've got to get in that circle of life. You've got to get in that life style for God to work in your life. As many as are led by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. You can get over there in that place where you can see God do great things in your life. But that's where it lives. It lives in an arena of faith. Active, every day, 
faith. I've had people mock people that they say, I'm believing God for a parking space. Oh, that's just foolishness. Well, at least they're trying to activate their faith. At least they're trying to get their faith somewhere where it'll work. So how, 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 how do I do this? Well, I, I mentioned it, but I'm going to go back over just a second here real quick, and then I'll, I'll be through. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's your source. Your lifeblood is the Word of God. Not a Bible promise, you know, or not open your Bible to a page and put your finger on the I, I've done that myself, so don't feel bad. Everybody, you know, all right, Lord, you saying something today? Judas went out and <laughs> hanged himself. Oh, I don't want to know. Let's go to another one. <laughs> God spoke through an ass. No, that's not, I don't want that one either. Let's, <laughs> that'll get you in trouble. But, but thank God for the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Isaiah 55, let me just read this to you real quick. Isaiah 55, verse, verse 10 and 11. Listen, this will help you. It helped me so much when I first got saved. Listen to this. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bud and bring forth, I love this, and bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower Bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not <clears throat> return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You don't have to try to figure out why God sent a word. All you have to do is read it. The Bible says he sent his word to heal. Yeah. So you've got the, 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 the very substance of faith right in front of you. Hopefully you got it. It's the word of God. Paul said this, and I'm... This, I'm, I'm, I'm Finish when I say with this, but listen. Paul said this over in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, and I'm going to just read it. He's talking about the armor of God, and he said, Take the helmet of salvation. Now, listen to this and the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? The Spirit world. What is it? What does it do? Well, it cuts, it defends, it protects. The sword of the Spirit. Now listen to this. Which is the Word of God. Now, there are two words for word, like God's Word. One of them is logos, and that's this whole Bible. Okay? But the other word is the word rhema, and it's the spoken word. When you take the sword of the Spirit, you're speaking God's Word. Go look at Jesus when he was tempted. What did he do? He spoke the word of God to a spirit being, to a devil, and that devil had to bow to that word. That's where faith lives. It lives in the word of God. God sent it so it would produce fruit with, by your faith. Lord, this is what you said. This is what I believe. That's what Abraham did. He, God gave him a word. He believed God. He believed that word. And you've got to make up your mind. That's how you're going to live your life. I got one more scripture, okay? Sorry. Listen to this. This will help you understand the whole dynamic here. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Listen to what it says. Okay. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Do you know that God started this whole thing by words, by His Word? Now, obviously, God, God has, doesn't have to have faith in Himself, but it does say in the Bible, have the faith of God or have faith like God. So apparently, He operates this way. 
How does he operate? He speaks. And he speaks the word of God. So if the world was framed by the word of God and you speak that word, it is already, the world is already trained to be responsive to the word of God. So you take your faith, you take out that sword, and you start speaking God's word over your life, whether it be your health, whether it be your finances, whether it be your circumstances. You know, the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart. What things soever you desire when you pray, well, you go find the word of God about it and start speaking that word out of your mouth. You'd be amazed at what God could do. Why? Because it's energized by your faith. And the world's already pre-prescribed to respond to the Word of God. It's still here. It's still, I know this may sound strange to you, but it's still floating in the atmosphere. Every word God's ever said is still here. He said it was. And it's here to produce fruit, to, to bring forth. So why not use it? Why not let your faith be activated? Speak the word of God. It's like the centurion said, Jesus, I don't need you to come. Just speak the word. Wow. You make up your mind to start living the lifestyle of faith in the world that we live in and you'd be amazed at things that will change in your life circumstances I mean I don't I could stand here all day and tell you things that Becky and I have believed and spoken from the word of God and declared and it didn't happen overnight sometimes it took years why because there's a devil out there there's an enemy trying to hinder but you, you just keep speaking the Word of God. You keep declaring what the Word says. You keep speaking your faith. And let God do something in your life. <clears throat> it's the only totally positive way to live. Because positive thinking won't get you there. I pro- it won't. You've got to know, you've got, this is what God's Word said. It's not what Pastor Sam said. It's what the Word of God says. That's what you've got to believe. That's what you've got to stand on. And when you do, it'll change your world. It'll, it'll change your world. Because you made up your mind to live that way. Amen? Did y'all get anything out of this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I... I I've just stirred up to, to encourage you. Look at your lifestyle. You know, look at your lifestyle. Let God work. Let Him work in there. And he, He'll do something great for you. He will. He'll respond to your faith. Faith is the means of success, the victory that overcomes the world. Okay, your world. Your world. Before we're dismissed, real quick, I want you to bow your heads with me, please. If you're here today, let me say it this way. You're out of sorts with the faith lifestyle. You've been, you've been away. You've been kind of living your own life, and, but you're here today. But you know you've got to get things in order in your life. I want to pray with you, and I'm not going to ask you to come to the front today. I'm going to just pray with you right where you are. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but something's come alive in you, hey, that's the Holy Spirit quickening you. Your faith is alive to accept Jesus into your life today. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you've been away, so to speak, from that lifestyle, and you know you've got to get back where you belong. The great news about our God is, listen, He said if you if you will confess your sins, He's just and faithful to forgive you and cleanse you. He was talking to believers. So, good news, God wants you living the lifestyle He has for you. 
So while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, if that's you, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you've been away from the Lord, not serving God, living the way you, you know you should, and you say, today, I'm going to make a change. Pray for me. I want you to lift your hand right now. Lift it up. Lift them up high. Thank you. You can put them back down after you've lifted them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm looking around. Had a number of people raise their hands. Anyone else? Quickly. Anyone else? Thank you in the back. I see that. Anyone else? Now listen, here's what we're going to do. Now, now you got to understand, if this is all you do is just pray this prayer, you're just soothing your conscience. But that won't last very long. You've got to take steps toward God once you make this commitment that we're going to pray. And uh, <clears throat> Paul's going to come and share with you how you can do that. But listen, first thing, first step, we're going to pray together. Now, I'm going to ask everybody, if you would, just pray with me. Say this. Say, Father, thank you that today I can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior by faith. I choose Jesus as my Lord, as my Deliverer today. I thank you, Father that you forgive me of my sins, you cleanse me from all unrighteousness, that I might live the life you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.